What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Jersey Boys Outdoors. Today, we're out here on the Barnegat Inlet Jetty with none other than Bayside Dave, and we're going to be showing you the basics of how to catch tog off the jetties. All right, so Dave, so the first thing we obviously need is our, our gear. We need to know what to bring out onto the jetties, especially, I mean, you got a good walk here. So I, yeah. you, know, you don't want to be coming all the way out here and being like, ah, crap, I forgot that in the truck. So, so what are we bringing out here and what, what do we need to catch some tog out here? Well, exactly. You know, uh, obviously, the first thing you need is a good, good solid rod. Uh, these fish are hard swimmers. They like to dive down into the rocks when you hook them up. So the first thing you need to do is pull them up, get them away from the rocks, and reel them in as fast as you can. You need a good, good solid rod for that with a good, good backbone, we call it. Uh, there's two different types of fishing out here on the jetty. You're either dropping straight down by the rocks or you're, or you're casting out 10 or 20 yards and, and leaving it out there. If, if that's the type of fish you're going to do, the casting out, you want to get like a 10-foot rod. This is my go-to rod. This is a Tsunami Trophy 2 heavy action. This throws up to 6 ounces. Uh, yeah, this throws up to six ounces, and uh, I like the ten-foot rod because it's long enough to keep keep the tip of the rod over the over the water. And as, as you toss out, you want to have as the least amount of an angle as possible, so you're you're not dragging across and possibly snagging into the rocks. Right, right. So I, I like the long rod to keep it out there, so you're lifting more straight as as you lift up and reel in. Gotcha. Um, now. If you're fishing close to the rocks, obviously a 10-foot rod, you're trying <laughs> yeah, to keep it right. halfway on the jetty. To get the drop exactly, down. you got to back off. So I always try to, let, try to stay as near the water as I can without being dangerous on, on any, any moss, of course. So uh, I, I have this 7-foot, this, uh, this is a G. Loomis Pro Blue uh, have, uh, fast action rod. This has a lot of backbone all the way to the tip. The, the tip is sensitive enough to, to, so you can see all the bites, and it's, it's strong and powerful enough to pull a good swimming uh, heavy tog off the bottom. Uh, and like I said, short enough so, so for the close uh, close fishing that you'll be doing. Right. And what are these spooled up with as far as your, your line goes? Oh, the, as far uh, you, you always want to get like 50 pound test braid uh, out here on the rocks. Um, you, you know, the rocks can really beat up on, on line. Like a lot of abrasion and stuff and like that. And a lot that. of abrasion and stuff like that. But the, the biggest thing that you do when you come out here and fish on the rocks is to put leader on. This is, I, I put 10 feet of 60 pound test mono leader on. That way, when that's hitting the rocks, that won't nick up and that's not going to break easy. That's a very important thing if you're fishing by the rocks. Put a good length of leader on before you put your uh, rigs on. Okay. All right. Uh, and then what kind of, uh, as far as our tackle box goes, what are we, what are we bringing in our tackle box and, uh, you know, what, what, what kind of rigs are we using here? Yeah, well, you know, you, you're going to be doing a lot of walking if you're out here on, on the jetty. You can also just, obviously, just w go from the walkway here like you see a couple guys here are doing. Right. But, right. you know, you got to bring stuff out and you got to be as comfortable as possible. I like bringing a shoulder bag. Some guys bring a backpack. Other guys bring a bucket. The least amount of th stuff you need is you got to have rigs with you, obviously. <laughs> right. You right, know, lots and lots um, of rigs. I always and lots of them because if you get snagged and, and, and you snap it off, you have to you want to re put, put a new put a new rig on. So bring about a dozen rigs with you. Uh, there, this this pack is great. It has all little pockets in it. I, I have rigs stuck in the side here that I can pull out quick and easy. I have stuff in the back here uh, that I can pull out quick and easy. It's all about quick and easy change and getting getting your hook back in the water. Um, of course, a lot of sinkers. You know, sinkers get snagged. You, you break them off. You got to replace them. I have this little Tupperware that I, that I stuck in here. I have different t size sinkers in here. I got twos, threes, fours, sixes, whatever ha whatever I, I need according to the current, according to the conditions. You know, sometimes the current will move move your rigs around and, and, and jam you into a rock. You got to up, up, up your sinker size. So it's all bank sinkers, though. You right. don't, don't use anything other than bank sinkers. There's also sinkers that they call um, trolling sinkers. They're, lo they're longer and thinner. Some guys like to use those out by the rocks. They don't jam up as easy. But um, it, it's all about handling your rigs out there and, and not allowing them to get jammed to the rocks is, is what we'll, we'll talk a little bit okay. about later. Yep. Yep. Um, so now you have all your rigs, you have all your sinkers, um, and... Right, so now we're gonna get into the... That's about it, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, always bring extra line. You know you run out of sinkers. Uh, I'm sorry, you run out of, you run out of rigs. And you're still fishing? Bring some line with you. Tie tie some new rigs with you. Bring bring some swivels with you. Um, always have a knife, a nice sharp knife. If you want to bleed out your fish right away, at least you have a good sharp knife to do that. If you have to cut something, I also always bring a good pair of scissors. That's good for cutting. Uh, that's good for cutting braided line. You never know if you have to cut the braided line. Right. Uh, always have a good pair of scissors with you. 
And then you want to keep your fish alive, which I do mostly, which a lot of guys do out here. You catch a good keeper tog, you want to keep fishing, put it on a live line. Uh, obviously, you guys know how to use a live line. Get, get it through the gills, through, through the loop, tighten it up around the mouth, drop it into the water. There's plenty of water running around these rocks. Drop, drop the, the fish down to the water, not too deep because that fish will run into a rock and stuck. <laughs> Try to pull on. it out later, forget it. Right. And then just tie a loop on it, and, and, and I always have D clips on my bags to, 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 to clip anything on. With all, with all the sinkers and everything in the bag, that's going to hold your fish from, from uh, you know, pulling the bag into the water. Right, right, right. So uh, that, that's about all the equipment you need, really, but just bring plenty of sinkers, plenty of rigs. Uh, that way you're not stuck out here, you know, you, you lost everything and you're done. You right, know? right, right. Yeah, make sure the fish are biting, you don't want to leave them too early. And uh, just, I know we talked about this in the, uh, the fluke video. I mean, you know, the rest of the bag there, I mean, are you bringing any plugs or anything like that for stripers in case you end up seeing some, a blitz going on oh or, yeah you, you got to be prepared for anything you right. know you, you you're you're out here fishing also you see birds going crazy you know you, know you got bluefish out there or, or striped bass or whatever's running out there even even false albacore which is right. amazing to, to to find that's what this pack is right yeah you're uh, able okay. to handle you got you got you got, a, you got a good a good hike back to the truck so yeah. you want to make sure to i got all, i got all my medals you know in case the bluefish are there in, in a little pack like this that this is a nice little piece of leader in case in case i uh, decide to, to clip off that long piece of leader right, right. Uh, for the tog and just put the short leader on with the clip on there to put my, uh, put my lures on. Um, I also have, you know, whatever I might need here. I got bucktails, I got, I got SPs, I got swim shads, you know, uh, right. whatever you might need. You know, you have, it, you have the, the bag with you. You don't want to be out here and be like, Right. I should have brought it, you know. <laughs> right. Um, right. Don't be caught with your pants down. That's for also sure. uh, as as far as rigs are concerned. We'll talk about that a little later, I guess. But um, you got these tog jigs. This is a diff This is another type of leader that you can use. And uh, you know, we can talk about that. I guess when we're talking right. about yep. rigs a little yep. bit later. Yep. I guess right? we're, we're going to get into that next. We're, we're uh, so now we know what what exactly we're bringing out here. Uh, actually, I guess one thing we missed, Dave, your shoes. What are we talking about with shoes oh, here? Very important, yeah, guys. So I, these, these rocks can get pretty slippery. So, so talk to me a little about your shoes, and then we'll and we'll get into rigs. Very important. Uh, you have to have spikes in the bottom of your shoes. These are Corkers. That's a brand of 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 uh, of sole uh, shoe, shoe, shoe sole that you buy that you, they can strap to any any pair of shoes. I, I like to use these hiking shoes that they have a higher uh, a little more ankle support a little more ankle support plus you can put the strap around that and, okay. and, and click that on without being uncomfortable against your ankle uh, sometimes I'll wear muck boots if it's a colder day out here and we got more wind we got water spraying up over over the over the rocks <laughs> I'll, I'll wear my my muck boots I'll strap the corkers to it I'll have surf pants on I have my nice uh, rain jacket on you gotta you gotta be comfortable you, you, you right. can't you, you know you can't be out here freezing. And obviously, the, re the reason why I'm talking about these corkers are, you know, a lot of people think, oh, this is fine, the rocks are dry, I won't slip, I won't fall. All right, for the most part, you probably won't slip or fall. But these rocks have moss on them, whether, whether it looks like it or not. You make a wrong step, something's a little moist that you don't realize, something's a little wet that you don't realize, you're going to go down hard. Right. These rocks don't have padding on them. <laughs> I see people walk off of here no with bloody arms, bl bloody elbows, bloody knees constantly. And again, if you have a big fish on and you got to get near near to the water, that's where the, the, the heavier moss is. You know, you got to have these these corkers on. I'm out here in the middle of the summer and on a beautiful sunny day. Not that that's today, but if I come out here in the middle of the summer on a beautiful sunny day where everything's dry, I'm still wearing these corkers. Good sneakers, good shoes might not you might not slip with them on. Good pair of spikes, you most likely will right. not be slipping. Right, your you best can, odds are going to be your to, best to have odds are going to have these these, and I can't stress it enough. Right, right, okay. Yeah, you got to be safe while you're out here for sure. Hundred percent. All right, so now that we got our our our, our gear and our tackle, let's uh, dive a little bit farther into rigs and exactly how to tie a rig and what what that's going to look like. All right, you got All it. All right. All right, guys. So now that we know what we're bringing out here, let's uh, find out what exactly we need to tie on the end of our pole to be successful to catch these tog. Dave, what what are we doing using as far as rigs? Yeah, it all depends on the bait you're using, but for the most part, uh, people are using green crab. Okay. You buy green crab at, at the local bait shop, uh, c cut them in half, cut the legs off, stick the hook through through the leg hole, pop it through, and, 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 that, and that's what you do. As far as what rigs you're going to use, uh, a lot of people like using these tog jigs. The, these are weighted. They have a nice, sharp, strong hook at the end of them. What they do is they sit on the bottom, and, and they hold the bait up above them. Fish will come down and grab that bait. You'll feel that bump. You'll, you'll pull hard that that'll set that hook and you and you pull that fish in that, that's a pretty decent uh decent rig to use 
the, the thing about these is uh, there's only certain uh, size weights that they use, half ounce up to about th three, or, three or so ounces. And um, when you get more current running, or if you have real tight rocks, these things get jammed up a lot. You got current running, they're not heavy enough to stay in place. The current will pull them into a rock, they'll get jammed up. So you want to transfer over to uh, your standard tog rig that you can put any size sinker on. Okay, okay. Standard tog rigs you can buy at any bait shop. Then it has, as you can okay. see, you got the loop on the bottom. We'll, we'll, and it's a, it's and, a almost looks like a high-low rig with just one hook at the top. Yeah, one hook at the top. There's also high-low rigs. There's also uh, the ones that have two two hooks at the top. You can see it's got a little bit of a leader. It's got the hook on there. You got the sinker on the bottom. You can go up to a six, eight-ounce sinker, whatever, right. whatever you need to hold it in place. Right, very basic. That's the sink. That's the single hook. You also have uh, what's called a snafu rig. Uh, snafu rig has t has two hooks on it. Uh, a lot of guys who fish with with larger size uh, green crabs like to put a hook on either side of that bait because okay. sometimes the toggle will, will just bite off that bait off the one side and not get that hook in its mouth and, and uh, you keep losing baits. So this is the same type of setup where you have the loop on the bottom, you have the swivel on the top and yeah, you have a leader but side. it has double hook. The double hook is uh, you have a hook snelled on the end and you have a, a hook sliding up and down uh, the line so obviously you just hook, hook, put the hook on either side of the bait and you got double your chance of catching a fish. There's also uh, tog rigs that do doesn't have the, the rig, the, the hook up high. They have the hook that like kind of lay down below the, the sinker, which works just as well. You know, some tog are always biting off the bottom and, and seeing what kind of baits there are. They're going to go at any bait no matter where it is, whether it's hanging or dropping the bottom. This is a, this is a really good brand uh, hook uh, rig to find if, if you're looking around here, especially in, around this area. Uh, Top Notch Tackle make, makes the best hand tied rigs that you can find out there. Um, they use uh, all, all the, the best quality uh, line, the, the best quality hooks and uh, swivels and all that. So this is a three way swivel that you tie to your line or you clip to your line I should say. And, and this part has the sinker and now you have this long leader that, have, that has two hooks on it. You can have a long leader that has only one hook on it. So when that goes down, the, the sinker hits the bottom, these two pieces are laying on, on the bottom or on the rock. And uh, these, these, these rigs work fantastic. So it all depends on, you know, what, what is more comfortable for you. Some, some guys like the, 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 the tog jigs, other right. guys like the high hook, some guys <laughs> like the low hook. And but, I, I saw that the, on the tog jig there, I saw you had a leader tied off to that. Do you need a leader on that or can you just tie that straight to your... To no, your it, always, use a, always use a leader. Like, like I was showing before, uh, you, you want a, a good length of leader. I, I use 10 feet. Right, I'm just, I'm just talking, talking about, about on the actual jig itself. I see, I see on this jig here, you have an actual, you have a leader tied to that jig. Oh, right. Is, yeah. there, is there a reason for that or is that... Uh... Well, yeah, I mean, the reason why I do that is because um, of the type of rig that I use. Uh, I, I really don't use these types of, types of rigs anymore. I, I use what's called a breakaway rig. Okay. Now, he's talking about this little piece of leader here off, off this end of this jig here. Um, you, you don't have to put a leader on if you're just you're using a regular standard clip where you just clip it on on, on the, the Right, so you can go simple right and just here. clip now, right on there and be done with it. Now for me, I use what's called a breakaway rig. Um, I'll show you. I have, I have it set up on my rod here. Um, and also, if you want to learn how to tie this rig, you can go check out Dave's video on his channel, which we'll put a link in the description below. Uh, so you guys can check this out. This is a little more, uh, this is a little more technical. Yeah, a little, little more advanced, a little more technical. Uh, like I said, I have 10 foot of leader tied. It's it's 60 pound test. And what I'll do at the end at the end of that leader, I will tie a surgeon loop and a dropper loop, just up from that surgeon loop, right? So what I have set up is little leaders of 30 pound test with a with a uh, surgeon loop on the end that I can attach to this dropper loop, and that's going to hold my baits. On the end here, this is the surgeon loop on the end, I make a rig, it's this long, it has a little surgeon loop on the one end, it has a, a larger loop on the other end to hold my sinker. This is also a 30 pound test. Now, the, the video that I have up on my channel right now, I made up this, I made up this rig a couple years ago and I was using 15 pound test for the, for, for the sinker and I was using 20 pound test for the hook. Over time, I found that I was using, I was losing way too many sinkers, because sometimes when you get a sinker caught, there, there's the possibility of freeing it. Sometimes it's 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 on a piece of wood or a piece of line, and and you need that extra strength to pull that up and break that off, and retrieve it. 
because I was using 15 pound tests, I was losing <laughs> Lose so many sinkers. One. So I right. decided, let me use the 30 pound test. That's strong enough to be able to get that out if, if possible and retrieve that and not lose as many sinkers. But if it is trapped and there's no way of getting it out, you can snap that off. Now that's 30 pound test tied to 60 pound test. What's gonna break first? The 30 pound test. Right. So even though it's strong enough to retrieve if possible, it's still the weak point for you to break off and you still have your setup. Right, not retying the entire rig. You're not retiring the entire rig. You still have your drop a loop. You still have your, your, your surgeon loop on the end. If this breaks off, um, I, I, carry, I carry about a dozen of these things pre-made with me. I carry about a dozen of these things pre-made with me. I have them in my pack here. I also make, like obviously you can see this is just a single hook that I mainly use uh, for smaller baits or, or uh, sand fleas or, or Asian crabs. But I also make the same exact leader that has the slide hook on there if I want to do the double hook on green crabs. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, sounds good. Well, I think we're uh, about ready to get into fishing, so stay tuned. All right, now we're going to talk about uh, what type of bait we're bringing out here and how we're rigging it. Dave, uh, you said sand fleas are one of, the, one of the things you like to use. Uh, how are you rigging sand fleas? Yeah, sand fleas, I love using uh, sand fleas. I rake them up off the beach. Uh, you can buy them at bait shops. They, they, they also uh, carry them uh, live sand fleas. Um, and we we're talking it, about we we're, we're talking actually we're talking before we started filming this, and you said you actually can catch them, and freeze them. Like they don't have to be live; you can stick them in your freezer oh, yeah. and, and, and hold them for a long yeah, period of time. Yeah, I, I I have a sand flea rake. You can buy them on Amazon. Uh, you, you can get them at local bait shops. Some some local bait shops carry them. Uh, rake them up at, at the surf line. Dig down into the sand. Pull it up. At, 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 you know, let let the water wash the sand away. Whatever sand fleas are there, put them in a bucket. Bring them out. You're fishing with you. If you have a, a tremendous amount of them and, and you want to save them for another time, throw them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in the freezer. You don't have, uh, some guys talk about parboiling them, you know, uh, so, so that they, they last a lot longer. I've never done that. I've been using sand fleas for five or six years. I throw them in the, in, in the freezer. I've used sand fleas six months after I had them uh, in the freezer okay. and, and bam, 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 th th yeah. those fish bite them right away. Right. So I, I never know. have a problem with them. I have some frozen sand fleas with me today. Uh, and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna show you how to how to uh, how to break these up. But I, Isaac's gonna bring the camera a little closer so we can get a close up on here on exactly how how Dave's gonna hook this sand flea. Yeah, when I'm when I'm fishing uh, on, on the jetty uh, with sand fleas or, or any kind of bait, I like to have my bait right at my side here, so I'm not jumping back and forth uh, every time I have to rebait my hook. So here's my sand fleas in a bucket right here on my side. They're frozen. Well, they're not frozen to thaw it out. They were frozen. <laughs> these are sand fleas. You see them in the surf crawling around, scooching around. This is, this is fish candy. Every fish, <laughs> every fish eats these. But for tog fishing, you, you can't beat them. Uh, just grab them, turn them upside down, go right in the center of it, go right through the center because there's a vein that runs along the top of the shell here that carries all the juices. So you pop your, your the point through, you pop, as soon as the, uh, the barb is poked through, you got your sand flea, and that's not gonna come off. Nice, it's nice and simple, very easy. And that's it, yep. that's how you're breaking the sand flea. Exactly. All right, good deal. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna cut, that sh cut this, and we're gonna actually come back and show you how to rig a uh, green crab. All right, sand flea is pretty simple. Now we're going to green crab with the snafu rig, which is a little more involved. So Dave, walk us through how we're gonna uh, hook up a green crab. Yeah, green crabs, <coughs> excuse me, green crabs, all the, um, all the bait shops carry them. Great bait. I'm not gonna say they're any worse or better than, than sand fleas. Uh, but green crabs are readily available. If you guys are going fishing for, for, for tog, uh, get your green crabs. Dealing with green crabs, you're dealing with a live, you're dealing with a live bait. Let me just let that swing out. Um, picking up green crabs, get a pair of scissors. They don't have to be fancy scissors, just a good, good pair like this. Grab your green crab, grab your uh, green crab right in the center. Now you have it. You see those pinchers? They don't tickle. They're not <laughs> going to injure good. you. They're not going to cut your finger off, but they don't feel good. Get rid of those pinchers right away. Just give them a clip and they're gone. Get, get rid of these legs. You don't need the legs. Now you have the body. A lot of guys just cut them right in half. Now you have half a green crab. All the leg holes here. So you take your, you don't necessarily need to do a two hook rig, but this is what I use. You can do it with a single hook. You take your first hook, you, you put it by one of the leg holes, and you pop it in. 
turn it out. Then you take your second hook on the other end of the bait. Same thing, through the leg hole, turn it and, and pop it out. And now you have a hook on either side. It's ready to throw in. Nice. Now whatever side of the bait that that tog is going to bite at, it's going to get a hook in its mouth. You're going to feel that, you're going to be able to set that hook. It's not going to rob you, it's going to not, generally not going to rob you of bait, but it, it has. <laughs> they still figure out a way to do it. All I can say is, <laughs> Fishing for tog is very frustrating, but very rewarding. Right. They, they, but they, they steal a lot of bait. That's why you got to bring a lot of bait, a lot of everything with you. Uh, but that's basically what you do to green crab. Cut them in half, cut the legs off, rig them up. Now, a lot of times, a lot of times when I'm picking out green crabs at the store, I like to get the real small ones. I don't cut them in half. I cut the legs off, and I, I kind of bash the top with the, with the scissor and open up the, open up the shell, and then I flip it over. And this is, the, this is, this is the, the front of the crab. And I'll go around, down through the legs here from the, from the front to the back with the one hook. And then on the other side of the crab with the other hook. Whoop. So now I have this, the, the, whole, the whole body, and I got two hooks in there. I love Very this. nice. A yep. little, bit, little, bit, little bit extra chew on there. Yeah. All right, now that we're all baited and rigged up, we're ready to get out in the water. Dave shows what we need to do. I got 10 foot pole set up here. How are we casting out, how far are we casting out, and how are we catching a fish? Yeah, generally, I, you know, around these jetties, uh, rocks can go out 10 to 20 yards. And uh, a lot of times, uh, the big fish are kind of scooching around the deep water just at the edge of those rocks. So I like to use the 10-foot rod, get that out there. Um, you don't have to cast very hard. Basically, I want to step back out of your way here so yeah. you can get some, get some room to cast. Just have a, have a few feet hanging like you normally would. Open up your bale. Not a very hard toss. Just kind of give it a... Now it dropped in. I like to keep my fingers on the line, not, not restricting it in, in any way. As soon as I feel it hit bottom, I close my bale and I, and I re reel up the tension and just leave it sit. Right, you're, not, you're not jigging, you're not working it. You're no, not, you're not you're working, just, you're, you're not jigging it. The there. most important thing is don't move it around. Don't lift it and drop it again because that's not going to work. Now we're getting bites. Definitely getting bites here. And what you do every single time that you go to move this, this rig. All right, I'm getting bites. I'm going to wait to see if I got a fish on. Uh, right, we're talking about, like you're saying, basically once you set that hook, you're not dropping back down again. You set the hook, you bring it, you're bringing it yeah, all Yeah, no again. matter what, regardless if you have a fish on or not, if you feel you want to test it to see if, oh, there's, there's a bite, I'm going to test to see if, if, if it's got a fish on or not. Always remember, lift high and reel fast every time, no matter what. Right, regardless of whether you got a fish, got cleaned. Now regardless see, whether there's a fish on there or not. The tog are very good at cleaning off your baits, <laughs> but... The, the, the biggest thing that the biggest mistake people make is I, I feel a bite. Oh, it's not a fish and they drop it back down. That's when you get snagged. Every time you move your rig off the bottom, pull up high and reel in fast. And we were talking about this earlier too. Gear, rear gear ratio is going to play a big part in this. What type of gear ratio are you looking for in the reel? Yeah, you know, I, I'm not an expert at, at actually numbers of gear ratio. You want a higher gear ratio so that every turn Gets a, lot, gets a lot of line in. Yeah, you want to move fast. So the, the faster you're reeling, the, the more the, the rig stays up over the top of the rocks as you're reeling them in. Right. Uh, this, this is one of the best reels that you can buy. This is, this is a Pen Battle 3 uh, DX. Yes, this is a Pen Battle 3 DX 5000. This is probably one of the best tog, rig, tog reels that you can buy for fishing off the jetty. Like I said, the most important thing is you don't want to keep snagging and losing rigs, losing, right. losing sinkers. I can't stress it enough. Lift high, real fast, immediately. Right. Get, that, get that in over the top of those rocks. And I mean, I've been out here many times where I didn't lose one, I didn't have one snag. Ah, okay. Because of that te of technique. technique. Right, right. Yep. Awesome. Okay, now that we know how to, how to cast out, we're going to uh, get the smaller pole, get the seven foot pole out and show you guys how to drop in between the rocks. All right, we switched over to seven foot rod, sand flea. Uh, Dave, what are we looking for as far as fishing close to the rocks and inside the rocks here? You're looking for deep pockets. You know, they, they could be just out here uh, on, on, the, on the inlet side. They could be here in between rocks. 
just go along with your sinker and, and your rig and just test the depth of the water. Now you have 10 foot of leader on, tied on with a, with a, with a knot. So as you, as you lower down into the water with your sinker, now you see the knot. And you know you, got, you have 10 foot below that knot. Now right, right now I'm in a pocket. I got about two and a half, three feet of line coming up out of the water up to my knot. So now I know I'm in seven feet of water. So that's the thing, walk the rocks, check different areas out, look for the dark water out here, in here between the rocks, these, these little pockets. You can drop down there, sometimes you got eight feet of water with a nice pocket of fish down there. Right, deeper pockets and we're trying to get down to the bottom, not, don't be on the rocks. Yep. All right, good deal. All right, well now that we know where we're fishing, we're gonna try to get one on here, I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, safely handle it and release it. All right, we got a fish on here. All right, we got a fish on. Dave, how are we getting it off? <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's not a keeper. Always make sure you have a wet rag with you. These fish have a protective slime on them that you don't want to wipe off with a dry rag, so use a wet rag. Hold the fish underneath, right below the gills. These lips have some heavy cartilage in them, so these hooks might not come out so easy. Just give it a turn, get down by the barb, and kind of give it a couple good yanks, it'll, it'll pop right out. There's your fish. Hey, what, a, what a tank of a fish, huh? Really, I mean, uh, for the size, these things yeah. fight really hard because they're really determined to get under the rocks and, and, and get safe. So uh, that's why you need the good heavy rod to pull that thing up and stop that from getting uh, into the rocks and snagging you. And just make sure you get over the rocks <laughs> into the water. Good release. There we go. All right, guys, well, we hope this video really helps you uh, in your next trip out to catch some tog. Uh, Dave, we appreciate you doing this video with us as always. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, let people know where can they find more information on you? Well, information on me, you got Facebook, uh, Bayside Dave. Uh, if you want to join my fishing group down here uh surf surf fishing lbi with bayside dave is on facebook we do all local uh just sharing information uh about fishing on long beach island and just general surf fishing information uh is shared there as well uh youtube channel bayside dave uh, instagram bayside dave all right bayside dave google it you'll find him guys i appreciate it we'll see you in the next video